Do you think that's a valid uh, uh feeling that they are being treated differently? Uh, look at the statistics. If you look in New York City at stop and frisk, we measured between 2000, this, these are police numbers, but we looked at them for our documentary. Between 2002 and 2012, there were 5 million stops. 83% of those stops were blacks and Latinos. 90% of those people who were stopped, 90%, that did not move on to an arrest. It did not move on even to a summons. Those people had done nothing. So 90% of the blacks and Latinos that were stopped in stop and frisk in New York City didn't do anything. Imagine what that does psychically to a culture if you fit the description, which means you're black male 19 to 25. Well, were, were most of those stops when they stopped, were those in high crime areas? Often in high crime areas, absolutely. So uh, you wouldn't see that as justification, that, that you might operate differently in areas where there are lots of crimes and in areas where there are relatively no I crimes. I think the challenge is that it's not being applied proportionally. For example, you have if you are arresting and stopping people who are uh, where many of them haven't done anything, you create a culture in that community, even a high crime community, where people feel like they are being criminalized, even those, as we saw in our documentary, who haven't done anything. We had a young man we talked to uh, named Keyshawn who's been stopped a hundred times, 100 times at least, and he, he's been stopped in front of his college, his professors walking by, his classmates going by. At some point, I think it becomes very damaging to these individuals, but also to a community that understands this is unfair. I, I saw one interesting... I